Design trends, they come and go. Now, the ones that are really solid and benefit the user the most are the ones that we see stick around. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at seven different examples of how they implement this trend in different ways. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now wait one second, if you're really interested in learning UI design and creating examples like you're about to see, then you should definitely check out my site, designcourse.com. So releasing here in 11 days or January 4th of 2022 is my designcourse.com where I teach UI design and you're going to gain access to nearly 100 modules that include over 15 hours of video, user interface tests which are interactive in a fun way you can actually play some of them now by clicking this play now button and also mentorship where you submit design challenges and i actually review and improve your designs that you submit so definitely check that out and the first example so let's refresh these i have these all open up in tabs um but i'm going to refresh them when we get to them because there's a lot of a lot of them have animations that kind of occur during load so let's refresh this one this is called niera travel and so right off the bat we have animation starting with the primary headline if i refresh again you'll see it and also notice there is a subtle kind of, I it made the edges dark. I, I forget what you call that, but it was very subtle. If I refresh again, you'll see it. Slight, very subtle movement. Um, obviously, we're gonna, another trend that we're going to see is movement based on mouse position. Um, we can see movement that's very subtle even down here in this area. Now, if I move down, something really cool happens to these little circles. They're animating dots, but based on your position, your scroll position on the Y axis from the top, it will kind of just slowly, it looks like it's applying some type of a mask and it kind of just very subtly disappears. I love it. Um, next up, another thing that we're going to see, I think a little bit more so, is very subtle parallax, which we can see here with these uh, photographs kind of laying on top of each other. You could tell that they're not moving at the same distance, which is what parallax is effectively. And of course, I have a bunch of tutorials on that as well. Uh, we could see over certain areas, we actually have this little uh, following cursor thing. Now that's something that's been around for a long time, um, but I really love the simplicity of this particular design. And also, another thing that we see is locomotive scroll. Notice when I use a scroll, I my, my scroll wheel, we, we scroll down or up and it kind of just very slowly gradually stops. It's not a hard stop like a traditional uh, scrolling on a web page. That's something also that I think we're going to see more of. And just a very nice design. Even check out, the, uh, and here's Parallax as well. So this, this design almost has everything that I'm talking about. Parallax based on these, this, these clouds right here are actually not a part of this photograph. And we know this because if we scroll all the way down, you'll see how tall or how high these clouds are, but then it starts to reveal more of the background image. So this is uh, some sort of transparent PNG probably. Very nice type as well. I, I really love the type that's being used here. By the way, pro tip, uh, what font extension? You hover over something and it's going to tell you the font. Wolken Display, W-U-L-K-A-N. So I love this font, it looks awesome. They have very good uh, mixing of topography here as well. All right, let's check out the next one. Let's refresh this. Again, j exactly the same way as the, uh, the, the first example. It just starts off with a photograph in the background and then we have animation coming in. And this time it is an SVG that's being clipped with a video, which uh, looks really cool the way they've done that. Another thing that we're gonna see right here, uh, which we see in this example, is SVG-based animations, so also based on scroll. So there's a single path here that we're going to see through the entire design as we scroll down that kind of just tells a story, which is really, really cool. Also, sequence animations, so multi-step animations. So first we saw this, then we saw this, and this, and it's all done in a very subtle, quick manner. Uh, it's something that you practically don't even notice, and that's the best type of animation. Very, very cool. As we could see, a lot of different types of animation based on scale, and all of it 
for the most part is predicated upon your scroll position. Very nice example right there. Let's refresh this one. This one is seed.com. Probiotics are a science. All right, so this thing is really cool as well. Again, we're seeing this trend of scroll-based animations. And again, I wanna say this has been around for quite a while, but I think in 2022, it's going to be something that becomes more of a staple in really cutting edge UI design. Notice here we have uh, a background that's completely fixed, but other uh, elements here are not. And it's just a way to really give life essentially to your UI designs. Another one called Hyperframe. So this is some type of framing company that also utilizes scroll positions to activate animations. So check this out. Very, very nice. I love the type. I love the amount of white space and the simplicity of it. Again, that's gonna be something I think we'll see as a trend here in 2022. Notice all this very subtle scroll animations. They, the two things changing here with this section, probably the section underneath it that we'll get to, is opacity and also uh, vertical movement up with the elements. And it's so subtle, you kind of don't even notice it. And that is the best type of motion design. Let's refresh this one. Singita. This is very subtle, I love it. Uh, it takes the background and it's very subtly just enlarging it, probably from a scale of one to maybe like 1.1 or something like that. And it's based on the scroll. It looks very nice, I love it. Again, very subtle animations. You barely even notice they're there. Very good example here. Let's refresh this one. Starts off with a boat reveal. Now, as you can see, there is a lot that's happening here. If I refresh, we'll see this again. Comes up, falls in slightly, uh, it scales down, which uh, the other ones that we've seen, the image scaled up. So you can take both approaches and then we can kind of see it's uh, being clipped right here with this interesting sort of shape, which gives way to the navigation and the logo right here. Of course, we saw all of this animate in as well. If I refresh this, very nice animations. Everything is seamless. Again, this is a great example to illustrate just how how well I it look how well emotion works uh, when it's done in a very subtle manner. So if I were to scroll down, you'll see how things are just barely coming in. And also, if I scroll up and down with my mouse wheel, you can kind of see things are moving in such a subtle manner. And of course, we have we have the locomotive scroll here as well. Parallax is being applied to a lot of elements here. So you can even tell if you look at this photographs inside of this square frame, they're actually moving based on scroll. Very awesome stuff right there. Let's refresh the last example. Very nice animations I, that are not just linear based animations, but ones that um, are using really nice easings where it ease in and then ease out. Coming down here, again, scroll activated, transforming the size of this image right here. Take a look at this. Interacting with the mouse, movement. Click this, expands out, takes you to a new page about that particular product. Again, locomotive scroll. Scroll activated animations here. Very, very awesome stuff. So I think the trend here overall is motion design and implementing animations based on user actions. And so we see that sort of thing being played out across locomotive scrolling, scroll-based animations, subtle parallax animations, animated SVGs, and also scaling photographs on scale. So if you're interested in that sort of thing and learning how to implement that, both in terms of UI design and the front end development aspect, let me know and perhaps I'll do a video here very shortly on how to work all those things in. All right, so as always, make sure to check out designcourse.com. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.